Welcome, to welcome the fourth annual, to the fourth Atari annual Homebrew Atari Awards. Awards. Homebrew I can't believe, Awards. It's, I can't believe it's four been already. Four already. Oh, we've got double. Oh, we've got double. Uh, uh, mute. Uh, mute. That's not audio. That's not audio. There. there. That should be better. Um, yeah, there's a bit of feedback. Anyway, <laughs> always something wrong. Um, so let me just turn down the TV volume. We don't need that anymore. Entertain the crowds. Stadia Mecco, yeah. Stadia Mecco, yeah, it's hello, in effect. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so, <laughs> my name is James O'Brien. This is Tanya O'Brien. And Darcy will be joining us yes. shortly for uh, presenting the awards as well. So, we are presenting the awards for all the games that were made through 2021 for the following <laughs> systems Atari 2600. 5200, 7800, 8-bit, and now Atari Lynx as well. We've added that new this year. And I also want to thank the sponsors of this presentation, which is Zero Page Homebrew, <laughs> who is broadcasting the show. That's right. And also Argon, who hosted some of the games that you tried out during the voting period mm -hmm. and who sponsored the show and Atari Age as well who hosted the voting mm -hmm. for the show and also Brian Mathern's uh, Atari Homebrew Companion Book mm -hmm. Series. Excellent books. Yep and also Atari Gamer which uh, has all the information you need on links as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and uh, thank you also to everybody who contributed a game uh, so made a game, developed a game, did the audio, the the visuals, uh, the programming for it, distribution of the games, and everyone who voted in the Atari Homebrew Awards this year. And we have had so many games to play this year. It's been crazy. There have been so many developers making games. and well, I've got stats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got numbers here. Nice. Um, so... Going from least to most, there were 10 Lynx games completed in 2021, 45 7800 games, 67 8-bit slash 5200 games, 89 8-bit games, and 129 2600 wow. games. So that's a lot. That's a lot of games. <laughs> and, we, and we did have a large number of 5200 games released this year. Um, thanks to uh, a group of individuals who we had on the on on Zero Page Homebrew, um, so they programmed like I don't know, it was like fourteen different games. It was from back in the day. It was eight eight. Um, they made it on eight bit and fifty two hundred, and they updated their games. And we did some premieres of their games on the show. Nice. Yeah. So big big year for fifty two hundred, and hopefully more to come. Uh, what else? Let's see. Oh, yes. So we normally covered 2600, 7800, 5200, and 8 bit in previous years, and we've added this year Atari Lynx to the lineup. And next year, we're going to be adding Atari Jaguar mm -hmm. to the lineup. And uh, somebody's donating a Jaguar to me That's really for nice. use for a little <laughs> while until I get my own, yeah. which is great. Um, and we also expanded the Atari 7800 categories into originals and ports this year due to the incredible number of 7800 games that were put out uh, in 2021, probably because of the huge influx of um, SD-based multi-carts uh, that, you know, the Dragonfly and the Concerto. Mm -hmm. There's even another one being made as we speak, and it's almost done. And it's very, very cool. Yeah. And it also supports the sound from Ricky and Vicky. Oh, nice. So there's a special sound card on that. So nice. this one will support that sound card. It sounds like all of, those, all of those extra uh, multi-carts really do help people develop new games. It, it, it does help. I don't know if that was the impetus, but it, it definitely helps um, test them. Mm. So you can test them, test them on real systems rather than having to put it on a a cartridge first and then put that cartridge in you can just test it directly nice. and it helps the end users uh, do troubleshooting and beta testing so that helps a lot mm. um, of course I want to thank the Atari 
homebrew, uh, the Atari community, who is in the chat right now, yeah. uh, watching the show and playing all these games and voting on the games. Um, so total games, oh, the number of categories increased from 15 last year to 18 wow. this year. And the total games nominated this year, 70 individual different games wow. across okay. 17 categories. Yes. So all the people that were voting tested out all these games That's and amazing. play tested them and then voted on them. And of course, I want to thank the nomination committee mm -hmm. who went through all the games released, like every single game uh, from the simplest game to the most complex game. They, they play, play tested hundreds, hundreds of games to narrow them down for the voters to just get six per category. To get six nominees, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. because, you know, when you vote, you don't want to be voting on 100, 100 games. That's, that's too intimidating, so, yeah. yeah. Any complaints from the uh, chat about any problems? Are we good? Anybody see anything? Um, oh, I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> if there's any problems, please shout them out. No, okay. Um, really loud. Yeah, really, really loud, loud through capital <laughs> letters in the t in the chat. <laughs> Sounds and looks good. Excellent. Excellent. That's Thank what you. We want to hear. We worked hard on it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, missing the name, the names of you. Oh, names of us? Of you guys. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm James. This is Tanya. <laughs> we'll keep reminding you. <laughs> <laughs> names are irrelevant. <laughs> um, so, we're going to be taking a look at the work in progress games first, specifically from Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Original. So, if Chris can cue that up. Number one, excellent. So here are the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Original. Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Original. Canonica. Dragon Defense 2021 Immunity Robot said. Tober's Nightmare. Rainbow. 
Vroom. Transition. And you want to read out the winner? Okay, I'll give that to you. So, drum roll. Um, oh, yeah, you have to say it's third place first and then second. Okay, and so. Read out the category. The Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Original. In third place, there's a tie. Vroom and Canonica. In second place, we have Robot Zed. And winner, Tober's Nightmare by Mick Crocker. Yay! Yay. Congratulations, Congratulations, Mick. Congratulations. Uh, we did have Mick scheduled to come on the show via video. Uh, if he's watching, please answer <laughs> uh, the chat. Um, he says he's online, but we haven't been able to get a hold of him. Oh, he's oh, like, here. here. Oh, start the, the video chat. then? Just start okay. the video. Okay. Start the video? Yeah. Uh, Don't no switch yet. yet. No. <laughs> Not yet. Wait We're till he's her. on. We're, we're we'll her. get him. So he is in the <laughs> chat. So thank goodness. And so we're just calling him now. So Mick, I saw you in the chat. So answer your call. <laughs> Am I calling him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ringing. Yeah. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Mick. Mick, Mick, pick up your phone. <laughs> Do you need the uh, earpiece? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mick, we're calling you through Skype as requested. <laughs> it's not I'm letting me answer. answer. Oh, no, give him okay. Uh, he said yeah. how. So try. I don't know, call him again. Okay, and so. And hang up, and, or he can call us. Switch over. Call him again. We're getting there. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's calling, he's calling. Yep, so I should. Yep, answer. Yep. There you go. Okay. One second. There he is. Hey, okay, that's good. Just getting the Bluetooth ready. One second, so we can hear him. You can put them on the screen, okay. just so people can see them. You don't have to stare at us. Hey! <laughs> hmm. Not working? Yeah, I'm trying to get... It was working, of course, before the show. Can you hold that? And now it's not, of course. So they should be able to hear you. Mick, can you say Hi. something? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can everybody hear him? This guy is right. It's fine, right? Like, is everything okay, okay, we're going to go blind here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to assume Mick is not swearing his head off. <laughs> he can if he wants. <laughs> okay, congratulations, Mick, uh, on uh, getting the award. Uh, great job. Uh, so go for it. We can't hear what you're saying, but they can. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, 
I'm honored to receive this award. Uh, considering all the other nominees, I, I wasn't expecting Tover's Nightmare to win. Are they? Uh, oh, nice. Kidding. Just wave at us when you're done talking, because <laughs> okay, we can't sorry, hear you. Looks like you're done talking. No, he's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the uh, all the other games were in this category were amazing. Like Canonica, Beach Z is a beautiful shooter. Had uh, great graphics and animation. Um, Coneball by Kev Kelly. It's a really cool sports game. Um, I love the backstory, how he created the game uh, with his kids originally, and they wanted him to make it on the Atari. It's just awesome. Uh, Dragon Defense by Tyler Frisbee. Had uh, great graphics and colors, and I love the fantasy theme of that game. Um, Immunity uh, by Mike Love. Uh, very fun and original concept uh, for a game. Robot Z by Sprybug. Um, incredible Mega Man style game. I, I, I love the power ups and the overall feeling of the game. You just Ugh. nailed it. Uh, Runes of Moria uh, by Rossum. An amazing ray casting engine for the 2600. Like, unbelievable. Uh, Vroom by Thomas Yench. Uh, first for the Atari. Eight player quad Atari game. Just very well done. Um. I'd like to thank uh, Albert Yuruso for the incredible amount of work he does at Atari Age and for keeping the whole community running. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Daryl Spice Jr., who gave me great tips uh, in the forums on assembly. Um, he was really helpful, and for his work on uh, DPC Plus with uh, Batari and Chris Walden. Um, Random Terrain for all the hard work he's done on his website. It was a great resource with so much information on programming for the console. I couldn't have made the game and the Halloween deadline without it. Uh, Zero Page Homebrew and everyone in the community who voted and helped put this awards show together this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. My girlfriend Jessica okay. for being very supportive through the development process of all my programming projects and getting excited for all my small victories and listening as I talked her ear off on all the stuff that she doesn't really understand, but just listens to me anyway. Um, and uh, mom and dad for hooking the Atari up in my room on the little black and white TV when I was a kid and purchasing the Commodore 64, which is where I got my start programming. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's about it. I really appreciate this. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. Oh, and uh, okay. thank you. Okay, oh, done. Okay. I just finished. Good time. Well done. <laughs> I think we have audio now. Of course, we're nowhere near. There we go. Can I say something, Mick? Yeah, I just uh, finished uh, saying everything, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. I can hear you now. That's awesome. So congratulations again. Uh, it's such a fun game to play. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's it. We're going to go to the next category. So thank you, Mick, for uh, yeah. coming on the stream. We got you on. And uh, we will talk with you soon. All right, great. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, these headphone things are not working. <laughs> we, need to get, we need to get the Bluetooth working. Okay. So let's go to the next category. Um, no, you can still stay. We're not going to switch every time. Sorry. Oh, Darcy, come back. Come back now. You're already here. It's too late. It's too late. Can't send Darcy away. Welcome, Darcy! <laughs> um, so, the next category is Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Port. Um, so, a port is defined as something that came from another system or remade again. It had and, to get on a ship and travel <laughs> from one area or system to another it area could be called or a system. Port. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the boop. ships go into a port. Yeah. Oh, that's a wrong port. That's right. Oh. Talking about video game ports. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is a game that's been remade from another system or another developer. 
And uh, so this is the Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Port. And here are the nominees. If you've got it queued up, here are the nominees. Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Port. 1942 Paint the City Ruby Q. Tomahawk 777 Turbo Arcade See, so you they, have to accept him you're in, on, in the room? They let me uh, yes. touch the controls and everything just went Do bizarre. Sorry about that. Do you wait in a room or, or they can so, automatically come in? They should automatically finish up. Atari 2600 best work in project. Pro oh, or can we cut that part and re-edit uh, <laughs> uh, Atari 2600 best work in progress port. In third place, Ruby Q. Oh, no, we had a tie. <laughs> so it's second place and third place. Uh, we have Ruby Q and Quix. And the winner is Turbo Arcade by Champ Games, John Champo, Coding and Design, Nathan Strum, Art and Graphics, Sound Effects. Congratulations, Nathan Strum. Ask him if he's around. Uh, are you around? Are you watching? We had Nathan Strom lined up to come on audio to accept the award. Um, he is not answering. We had him scheduled to go through Zoom. Does anybody know if he is in the chat? No. No? Not on the chat? I, no. He got called away. Bathroom emergency. But we figured yeah. out the headset thing. <laughs> oh, he is. I'm here, waiting for the host to start the meeting. Interesting. Oh. But the meeting has started. Yeah. It wouldn't be the uh, Zero Page Atari uh, Homebrew Awards without a few yeah. hiccups here and there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
We could dance. Should be going. Try and uh, try and reconnect again to us. I don't know if they can even see me dancing, but uh, is this being wasted? They can see your upper half of dancing. Yeah. <laughs> That's for the they best. You can't see the fancy footwork. <laughs> <laughs> no. You have to assume Darcy's doing a very good dance. It here. is very good. No one could have done it better than I am currently doing it. Here, I mean, oh, we've go got time. The, let's do a let's up. do a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do one with them. Oh Can you boy. Give him another code, maybe? <laughs> maybe, but I didn't change the code. Maybe having it on this computer gave it's him a different problem. code. Because um, he's not he's not here. Okay. Pay no attention to the talk Check of codes. The These <laughs> codes are not for you. They're not for me I either. Went through the meetings, but it's, like, you don't have any <laughs> Does anybody else find it hot in, in here? Yeah. yeah, we'll give him the number. In, yeah. And link the meeting. Yeah, send the link to him. I don't have an easy way to. Send. Okay, let's do this. The, what is? What Honestly, is something is entertaining is going to happen soon. And you just have to be patient. It's. <laughs> it's no different than any other situation. Um, you can't count on being entertained every second, uh, even on a highly okay, produced okay. show such as no, this. I need to read Sometimes that there's a little bit of, okay, okay. you know, okay. downtime. Okay, I challenge you to a game of rock, scissors, paper. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> One, two, okay. three. Okay, um, uh, we're going to read out the meeting ID to you, uh, Nathan. So only Nathan connect. What? Uh, <laughs> can you read it out to me, Gio? Five, four, six. Five four six four eleven four one one nine three one seven nine three one seven because we'll just change it after so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> nice try, other people. In the chat. <laughs> okay, so start the meeting. We do want to talk to Nathan. Call from Don Wilson. That's Can't not who we're looking out, for. Please. That's the wrong person. <laughs> Call from Don Wilson. I did. Waiting for Nathan. Did you get the number, Nathan? Uh, he's asking for it one more time. Oh, Nathan! <laughs> okay, what is it, Gio? <laughs> uh, nobody typed it? <laughs> okay. No, nobody? Okay, now your credit card. Now we're going to run over time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. 546. 546. 411. 411. 9317. 9317. Thank you, Muddy Funster. Oh, we should have brought the cat on a long time ago. Oh, no. Yeah, oh. he's the entertaining one. Yeah. There you go. It's much more entertaining. So Atari than us. is here to say hello. <laughs> Hi. So you can oh, see him. He screen, does screen cats. Yeah, he does have his his bow tie on. He's suddenly okay with being picked up. Yeah. It's all about the bow tie. Maybe it's like around his neck, so <laughs> making him very passive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so Atari says, congratulations. This is the translation. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there should be a passcode there. Try me the invitation. There you go. Uh, passcode is Z. Z? Zero, zero, sorry, zero one. Z zero one. N. N. Capital L, I think. Capital L. X. A lowercase x. There you go. Check that out. Is that an L? L? Yeah, yeah, it is. We're almost there. Yeah, yeah. One there. step closer. <laughs> oh, he's, he's 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 coming. Okay. Okay, so now we need to press on to me. There you go. Here I am. Oh, we've got a little bug thing. Excellent. Let's switch over to him. Oh, sorry. Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> oh, okay. Nathan. Nathan. We can't read your lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh. Is the volume up? Uh, yeah, it was good for the last one. Was it? Okay. <laughs> Looks like your connection might be a bit laggy. Oh, he's connected to us now, but we can't hear him, so... <laughs> he's talking, I think. Or... Nathan's on the left. Yes, we are on the right. Can anybody else hear Nathan? No, because it would the laptop volume would go up. Yeah. I can hear myself, so I'm I'm good. So maybe, I can hear myself, so I'm good. The, <laughs> maybe something laptop? with the meeting? Like Uh no. His no, no, microphone no. should ju just come through and Oh no, it's fine because it's a mute, so he's fine. Oh, he's on mute? Oh mute him if you wanted, but we don't want to mute him. No, that's what I'm saying, so mm. he should be fine. Yeah. Live doing things live uh. is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Why we cannot hear him? I don't know. His microphone's unplugged, his microphone's muted. Computers in general. Going to zoom and change your microphone. Going to zoom, change your microphone, even if it's the same mic. That's for him. That's yeah, for yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> the hello. great yeah. thing about this is that the chat is full of techies. <laughs> <laughs> There's tons and tons of people who know exactly what to do if you and need help. IT them. support, you've got IT support. Uh, you've come to the right place. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so hopefully it's just that. It's just like you've got a different microphone plugged in and it's set to default or set to something Use explicit. Telephone. Use, Use the, the telephone. You can, we'd have to type our telephone number to you. I'm not saying that over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should for I invite him again <clears throat> or end the meeting? Uh, no, we're, we're connected to him, so it should be, should be fine. I'm just wondering if it is our problem with the Zoom call. No, no. It's no, not? No. Okay. No. Text your speech. You could. That would be slow. What is the bod used for Zoom? <laughs> uh, 2400 bod. It's, I can just type. He no, said he no, can just type. Hear him. Yeah, we'd like to hear you, but you can type. It'll be very slow, and we probably you could probably just type it in the chat, um, and we can move. That's on. actually a good. That's actually a really good solution. Yeah, the and, chat and, will show up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations, Nathan. We're gonna move on to the next uh, uh, next thing. So let's switch off of that. And what award is up next, Darcy? Uh, number three. You are correct. Number three is Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Original. Um, so I, I think we, we separated out this year 7800 awards, echoing my voice in my head, um, between ports and originals. Uh, last year we had them all lumped together, but because there's so many uh submissions not submissions so many games made mm -hmm. in 2021 that that is the best way to separate them out because yeah, so, they're yeah. very distinctly different the ports from originals yeah and there were a number of ports and a number of originals so we thought that's what we did with 2600 earlier on and it makes sense to do it with 7800 absolutely so if you can queue up that video the best uh atari 7800 the nominees are for Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Original. These are works in progress. Are Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Original. Bernie and the Cubic Conundrum. Cannon in D, D for defense. Dragon's Havoc.
Night Guy Quest for Something. Ninja Sky Perilous Island. Space Peril. Yep. Welcome back. Sorry for all the technical difficulties, but you can't do a live thing without having some technical difficulties. Not a successful live Not thing. A, yes. It's more fun that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, Darcy, take it away. All right. Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Original. In third place, Bernie and the Cubic Conundrum... Conundrummer... Ew, it's a tie. Third is a tie. All right. I should read a little more before. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's tied. So uh, third place is tied with uh, Bernie and the Con uh, Cubic Conundrummer and <laughs> Dragon's Havoc. In second place, Night Guy, Quest for Something. And the winner is Ninja Guy, Perilous Island by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zinega. Congratulations, VHZC. Woo! Super fun game. Uh, actually, switch over to the close-up cam. Uh, I'm going to show them the award. Because this one actually auto -focuses. Oh, you actually oh, mean oh, the... that one. You mean the... Oh. What? Yeah, you want the widescreen. No, I want the widescreen. The sorry. wide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving the wrong, uh, wrong information. Now I can't there see what go. I'm doing. That's okay. Just look at the screen. Be patient. There we go. Here. And we have a written acceptance speech from Vladimir. He says, Thank you very much for this award. I feel really honored. When I made the original Ninjish guy on the 2600, I wasn't totally satisfied with the result. I mean, I genuinely think that it's not a bad game. But there are a lot of ideas and mechanics that I wasn't able to implement, in part due to my lack of knowledge, but mainly for the limits of the system. So when I had discovered the wonderful 7800 Basic, one of the first things that I wanted to do was a sequel, where I could make the game as that I envisioned originally, and I think I'm really close to that with this project. And now this award makes me feel more convinced to complete it. So congratulations. VHZC, if you haven't played that game or any of the nominated games, definitely go out and download them because there's a lot of good games. I saw a lot of remarks when people were playing through them. It's like, oh, wow, I haven't played this game before. This is really, really good. So it's kind of a nice list of games if you haven't tried out to go and download them and play through them. Uh, so let's see what's coming up next. It's the counterpart for that the Atari 7800 best work in progress port. So this is a work in progress, so it's not done, just like the last game, uh, but it's also a port at the same time. So we've split the 7800 into four categories based on original and port and work in progress and completed. So this one is Atari 7800 best work in progress port 
And here are the nominees for that. Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Port. Arkanoid. Attack of the Pet Ski Robots. Ghosts and Goblins. Keystone Capers. Mario Brothers. Okay, let's find out. All right, so I'll hold that. this. So, uh, just to confirm, I have the right one. Uh, Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Port. Sounds about right. Yep. Yes. And in third place, Attack of the Pet Ski Robots. And in second place, Ghosts and Goblins. And winner. Keystone Capers by Muddy Vision, Lewis Hill, Bobby Clark, Matt Smith, and Bethany Hill. Woo! Congratulations! Let's go over to Lewis Hill, Muddy Funster. Yay, Yay congratulations! <laughs> Welcome to the wow. show. <laughs> That's just awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Keystone Caper started off as just a bit of a an experiment. It was a it was a um, a bit of a wild programming um, deviation. I've been doing some playing through on some of the old twenty six hundred games, and then I got to thinking, what if you know, what if we could do a seventy eight hundred version of this? How would it look? Um, and then one thing led to another, and I had a tech demo, and I let a few of the guys take a look at it, and they were they were give me suggestions and things and it, it went from there really it all came together quite quick um i, I would like to say a, a really big thank you to uh, to bobby for doing some more absolutely cracking tunes um for the game some original um mixes of, of the ragtime tunes and music which were really good um and and, and also um to bethany uh, my daughter bethany hill she did some extra artwork for the game over screen and things like that just to give it some original flair um for, for the conversion and I'd also like to say a big thank you, James, to you and to Tanya and the team for, 
for, for the stream every week and putting on the awards and, and you know bringing the different parts of the community into that whether it's 7800 2600 or whatever and also Alan all the um, Alan all the um, the other um, sponsors that's the word I'm looking for um, <laughs> for uh, supporting um, all the home brewers um, and, I, and I do want to say as well the field in this category was was amazing um, every one of those games would have made a worthy winner without without a shadow of a doubt um, and I'm, I'm really humble and humbled and, and really surprised um, the community gave me their votes and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for that and I would say a big thank you to everyone who voted yeah, it, w it was a very crowded field. 7,800 uh, homebrews have really stepped up their game. It's just amazing. It, it's, it's a golden age, I think, for the 7,800. And 100%. Tanya made the comment at the very start with the um, about the uh, the SD cards becoming available, and I think that was a game changer. Um, right. That alongside um, Matt Smith's um, Atari Dev Studio to bring right. all of those dev tools, uh, the dev tools together. Um, with people like Mike and Matt in the background to give you help and advice and, and coaching as well. It's um, it's a fantastic time to work on the platform. Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah, so congratulations. Uh, excellent job on the game. And uh, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. So thanks. Thank you. For Thank you, everyone. Thank you. In. Talk to you later. Yeah. So I think uh, we're going to be talking with Al Yeruso now from Atari Age, who is a sponsor of the fourth annual Atari Homebrew Awards and has since from the beginning. I can't believe it's four years now. <laughs> We've been doing zero page homebrew for four years and uh, now the Atari Homebrew Awards for four years. And Atari Age hosts the forums that we all discuss and they also have a discord chat as well and this is where the votes take place as well and uh we talk to everybody can't stand my voice going echoing in my head it's probably fine for you um and so it atari has been a massive massive help in being the place to coordinate everything uh, that brings it brings the community together yeah um so it's been invaluable in and instrumental in getting everything done because you know we we chat with each other we have uh private conversations for beta testing and i arrange to have the games on the show on zero page through the atari age forums uh, how's it going over there getting uh al getting ready to join on google things. chat he's getting there um i just need to go back to the chat how can i go back to the chat sorry i never uh i think you just close it it opens up a new oh let me see i can never use this google chat thing i'm gonna go back to the to the chat so i can find it yeah. <laughs> getting it hooked up <laughs> So you have to do that. No, no, I got that. I, oh. I know that. I just I can I can show Atari again. Oh, Here, okay. hold on. <laughs> okay, we're getting now on the phone. Yep, blank wall there. <laughs> Tanya was Go getting back. the cat to distract everyone. And then the cat ran away. So. Oh, I think we're almost there. Get my earpiece in again so we can talk to <laughs> Al and see what's going on with Atari Age. Because mm -hmm. um, not only do they host all the developers and players but they also sell a lot of the games that we play on the show and give the awards to oh there he i is. think there he is Yay. let's switch over to al so i can stop delaying <laughs> can you hear me we can hear you welcome to the uh, stream al awesome thank you so yeah just turn al up a little bit he's a little bit quiet on the laptop there um, so thank you once again for sponsoring the awards and just being you and running Atari Age. Because you can see by the bo boxes in the background of Al that uh, there's, he does a lot of stuff. Hang on, I'm getting a lot of echo, making it hard to hear exactly what you're saying. And I'm using headphones, so I don't have speakers on. Is that something on your end you can fix? Uh, interesting. Um, 
I don't know why it's echoing. No, Does continue. anybody else hear echo through the stream? I'm sure it's because I'm calling in. You might need to mute the stream. Oh, do you have the stream going? I do, actually. Yeah, let me stop that. Oh. Okay, it's muted. Us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Damn it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> gotcha. <All> okay. Right. <laughs> so welcome, what? Al. Um, Thank you. So what's what's been happening in the land of Atari Age? Do you have to guess? After all those games I added to the store right at the, beginning, <laughs> or right at the end of December? As a matter yeah, of fact, true. I've got tons of boards. What I was doing during the other portions of the stream so far is I've been prepping about 150 boards, 2600, 750, 200, just as part of all the games I have to get built. I'm trying to get everything built uh, by the end of this month, and I've got all the boxes, manuals, posters, uh, labels, and tons of other stuff ordered. Uh, for all these new games, it's just a matter of, of getting proofs and approving proofs, and then you know they go into production. Some stuff's already in production. I already have some of the things, but yeah, for basically the next four weeks, it's pretty much gonna be nonstop uh, building games and then shipping the games once they uh, once I have everything together. And I'm also working on the next suite of, of games that I, that I want to add to the store in April. Uh, so instead of just having uh, a huge big release of games, you know, one time in the year, which has been the case for the last several years, which sucks for me because huge pain in the neck. And for other people too, having to wait that long, uh, including authors, not just the, the, the people playing the games. Uh, and then, and again, in the summer and or uh, for PRG, if the Portland Retro Game Expo happens this fall, you know, there hasn't been a show now since 2019. Uh, so everyone's really eager uh, to see that going again. And it's not clear whether that's gonna be in the summer or in the fall when it's traditionally been, and they haven't made an announcement yet. No. Uh, so hopefully, you know, at least three sets of releases this year beyond the one that I'm working on right now. Oh, and plus, great. I'm still working on a forum upgrade, which will go live pretty soon. And then after that, the, the big job of actually getting uh, the store moved over to new software. So, so you have I didn't have enough to do for... already. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, but it's it's fun. As long as yeah. I just time, you know, it's time management and, and staying focused on things. Yep. I, th I think you're the same mindset as me. It's all about organizing and, and managing things. I, I guess you have to do a lot of that. Is it is it like somebody yes. who works in a candy store, you get sick of candy, or do you still love, love <laughs> playing all these games? You're surrounded by them, right? No, I, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. The, the community and the games they're putting together for all these different systems, just absolutely remarkable. Uh, and it's great to see you expanding into Lynx and then the Jaguar. I know there's pressure to get into the Jaguar. For, We're for doing this, ja uh, Jaguar next year. year. Yep. Exactly. So that'll be great, too. Uh, and just like, you know, you've gone through the stats a few times, just the remarkable number of, of, of nominated games. And congratulations to anyone. Yeah. Even if you were nominated, just writing a oh, game yeah. on any of these platforms, you know, is non-trivial. Uh, and, you know, it, so it, it's, it's just remarkable, again, to see people, so many people involved in creating new games. And it's nice, you know, I, it's easy for me to keep tabs on a lot of it because a lot of it takes place publicly on the forums. Yep. Uh, there's not a lot that comes in by surprise. Uh, and then, you I'd know, working with the authors. I'd say 1% that sneak up on you. It's like, oh, who's this person? They're posting exactly. on Exactly, yeah. yes. So that does happen, of course, but it, there aren't very many games right now that are developed in secret. Uh, so it's always fun to watch along and, and offer suggestions to people and just see how the games develop over time. And then, you know, the, the artists, the pixel artists who also work in games, people doing sound and music. And then the artists and designers putting together uh, artwork for all the printed materials too. Again, just the talent in the community never ceases to amaze me. And of course, zero page homebrew, as well. You know, going over the you know constantly publicizing the games in your streams and doing these awards now for four years, and then continuing expanding uh, on that. And I know that's got to take a lot of time for you too. I can't imagine how much you had to do just to get ready for this show. Yeah, you see all those the, the games in those videos. I had to replay every single nominated game to capture the high quality <laughs> yeah. video to to put those together and then edit them together. Type all the text anyway. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. That's right. With 17 categories now, and there'll be even more next year with the addition of the Jaguar, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So That's for sure. You have your work cut out for you. <laughs> it, well, I, it's everyone appreciates it, but it's sure. fun. Just, just Good like you, you, I think you were in the same position. It's, it's a lot of, a lot of work, but it's so much fun talking with the developers. And I, I, it feels like homebrew is in a place where you see massive progression every year over year. Where you saw that uh, from the early '70s through the '80s, where they understood and started learning how to utilize the equipment. 
uh, utilized the consoles and it and games just got better and better and better every single year. I see that with yeah. homebrew now. It's just leaps and bounds every year. Yeah, and it's not just and you know thanks also to be given to uh, people doing development tools. Uh, you know, like yeah. seven hundred basic and and Beatart basic and you know for all these different systems, the the compilers, the the IDEs that people are putting there or you know taking advantage of existing IDEs. Uh, you know, all the tools, and, you know, Stella, of course, and other emulators for other systems. Yeah. Uh, again, just remarkable. You know, they, people, they're, it's just light years ahead of what uh, developers had available to them in the 70s and 80s uh, oh, for yeah. these platforms. And, not, you know, also the documentation and the Internet being able to where everyone can talk and, and share information as well. Uh, and even being able to play games online in your web browser is pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the two, the JavaScript playing for like, yeah, yep. there's lots of web pages. You just drag and drop the binary there, and you're you're playing the game with your keyboard yep. or even your uh, your gamepad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're so definitely I don't, I don't in a good a good position for homebrew right now. That's for sure. Absolutely, and yeah, like for the 7800 again, it's remarkable. You know, it just exploded in the last couple of years with the the number of people developing games, and again, you know, that's a testament to things like 700 Basic and the tools. Uh, and of course, like you said, the, the flashcards now being available for the 700 make it a lot easier to iterate yeah. when doing development. Yeah, definitely. So thank you once again for sponsoring the Atari Homebrew Awards and uh, making it Atari Age a place for everybody to gather together and share ideas and make amazing homebrew. Thank you. And thank you. You know, it, it wouldn't be anything at all without people actually visiting the site. Uh, and contributing, you know, to the forums, especially which is the busiest part of the site, and you know the, the amount of development activity in the forums is just really remarkable, and uh, I really love seeing that. And thank you, you know, for hosting these awards and bringing everyone together for events like this. It's it's great to see. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and and it's great to, you know, give recognition to all these amazing developers yep. and artists, like Absolutely. you said, and musicians that mm -hmm. all contribute. And, yep. and the Artists for the box art too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody Correct. that yep. contributes everybody. to the game. You can't forget all these people. They all put in work to make this mm -hmm. game arrive at your door, including Al. He yep. ships it out. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Al, and we'll talk with you You're online welcome. soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye bye. So it looks like things are going a little bit smoother now, thankfully. <laughs> We're getting people online. You know, we can talk with them now. It's amazing technology. Touch. Knock on wood. Come on. Knock, oh, knock on the wood over yeah, here. Yeah, I was going to say, don't speak too soon. <laughs> yeah, things can still go wrong. Hold on, people. Um, so the next category up, we're going back to 2,600 games now. Mm -hmm. uh, this next two awards are in the under 4K category. And we separated out the under 4K a couple of years ago uh, to honor those people who squish those bites down <laughs> and find those extra little bits everywhere they can to make super fun games mm -hmm. in small packages. And 4K was chosen because it was a natural cutoff point for back in the day there were 2K and then quickly went to 4K for a long time. Mm -hmm and it relates to bank switching and stuff like that uh, to other technical things so we thought we'd honor those people who make small games fun and it's unbelievable what people have been squeezing out of 4k and so we're going to take a look at some of those uh, games right now so this category is atari 2600 best homebrew under 4k 4k and under sorry 4k and under original and here are the nominees. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and Under Original Alien Exterminator Chaser Hellway K 
Tejo chases the cheese. Legendary Spear Star AD. Now we're back. I'm going to tell you a story about the earbuds in a second. Okay, <laughs> Tanya, let's... Uh... Okay, so I'll give that to you. So, oh, it's this one. again, Atari 2600, best home brew, 4K and under, original. So in third place, we have Alien Exterminator. And Yay. In, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, in second place, Hellway. And winner, Keijo Chases the Cheese by Red Button Games, Leonardo Santiago. Congratulations, Leonardo. Congratulations. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Chat, exciting clap, 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 clap. Uh, so I've got a written statement from Leonardo Santiago uh, for his win on Keijo Chases the Cheese. I'm so happy to receive this award. I didn't believe Keijo could, could win as there were great competitors in the same category. Mm -hmm. I have to thank all the voters. The game concept was born in September of 2020 and a few days the kernel was, became playable. At that time I was working on another game and this was just a tiny one, but with a lot of potential. The real challenge for me came when I decided to keep it to just 4K as the original games were back in the day, like I was saying. And for that, I had to learn how to adapt and shrink my code. I can say that Keijo woke up in me a desire to learn more about the Atari 2600 architecture and its assembly language. Thank you, Keijo. I would like to thank everybody who supported me during the development, especially my wife, Giselle, uh, my daughter, Alice, my sister, Fabiana, and my friends, Leonardo Camera and Claudia Maria. I would also like to thank all of the Atari Age community, both of you, James and Tanya, and Darcy, uh, at Zero Page Homebrew, and all the sponsors and everyone who voted for Keijo Chases the Cheese. I have a new game to show off soon called Razor's Edge. Ooh. With this game, I applied a lot of new concepts I learned while I was developing Keijo. Thank you again, Leonardo Santiago. So, Congrats. thank you so much. Congrats, Leo. And for those of you who don't know, Keijo sounds like cheese in Portuguese. Yes. So that's a play on words. So mm. cheese chases the cheese. <laughs> like queso for Spanish. Uh, so the headphones, <laughs> why they weren't working. I'm oh, just going to grab this and move it okay. away. Go ahead. Is I was putting in one headphone, right? And it was like, it's not working. It's not connecting. It's not even making any noise. Um, and I was trying and trying, trying, as you saw. <laughs> and so Darcy decided to like try out the other headphone. He's like, oh, that one must be dead, out of battery, something's wrong. And when he took out the other headphone out of the cradle that it, it was charged, that he charged, Magic. he's like, it worked. <laughs> so it wasn't that that one was dead, is that they both disconnect unless you have both out. Which, so. which the moral of the story is don't buy cheap uh, earbuds. <laughs> yeah, because the cheap earbuds assume 
You never listen in mono, which yeah. kind of makes sense, but still, don't limit it! Ah! Anyway, uh, so, okay, so we're going to go on the counterpart for the Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and under, but this time it's ports. Uh, so here are the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and under port. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and under port. Dodge it. Soul of the Beast. Now we're back. Hey! With the winner! Yes! Okay! Oh, I'll give go. that back to you. So again, Atari 2600 Best Homebrew, 4K and under, Port. And in third place, we have Pong! In second place, <laughs> we have Dodge It! And winner, Soul of the Beast by Michael Christofferson. Congratulations. And we have a written acceptance speech from Michael here. And he says, wow, what? <laughs> I'm deeply honored to receive this award and nominations for my game, Soul of the Beast. I've never won anything in my life so I can't begin to describe how much this recognition means to me. Today happens to be the second anniversary of when I started to work on this game. Two years of wanting to make it as good as I possibly could. So, I would like to thank the judges, you guys, the Atari community, my friends and family, everyone that believed in me and continues to support me making things I do and keeping me going. I also want to give a special shout out to my friend Bruce who I completely blame for this. <laughs> and Gustavo Pezzi for the wonderful online course on learning 6502 assembly for Atari. I wouldn't have managed to do this without you all. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, congratulations. Great stuff. So, here you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can swap if yeah, you want. You want to go up there. Usually I do it through in a video so the Darcy's head's cut off. Oh, no. You have to get shorter. Oh, no. Oh, not taller, shorter. <laughs> um, so the next category mm -hmm. is Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original. So this is anything that you see on the screen. It's not the sound. It's not how it plays. It's just the graphics, how good it looks. Or, you know, the technical achievement of the graphics, something you've never seen before in a game, or you just like the colors. Whatever. I like the colors. I like the colors too. Mm -hmm. Especially green. Uh... <laughs> it is really green over there. Oh, right it is now. green right now. It's green behind <laughs> us. It's a green screen. Um, so this is uh, honoring the graphics portion of the game uh, for uh, 20 Which is pretty important. It is. Uh, I don't think anybody's made a graphics graphics-less game before. They've made Challenge. soundless games, but not graphic-less games. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if anybody's up for the challenge. Because uh, they wouldn't be able to win in this category. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 
So the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original are Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original Game of the Bear Kung Fu Combat 2 Legendary Spear Slide Boy in Mazeland. Solo Mahjong. Zark Stars. We're alive. We're back. Darcy's putting in his earbud. So, who are the third, second, and winners? Or winner? For Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original. In third place, we have Game of the Bear. Second place, Zark Stars, A Space Saga. And the winner is Kung Fu Combat 2 by Edward Smith, Kevin Mosley, Michael Tom... Thomason. Oh. Yay! Yay! And we have... Somebody on the line. Kevin Mosley on the line to accept his awards for graphics. Here. Switch over. Welcome, Kevin Mosley. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Um, Kevin, aka oh. Kevin Moss 3. Oh, no. Can't hear him. Are the, are the headphones no. on? Are the earbuds on? Did you Can, turn them on? Yeah, they That's automatically did. Uh, uh, talk again, Kevin? Oh, what? Can you hear oh, me one second. I think this ran out of batteries. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, Best Kevin, welcome to the show. Can you hear me now? We can. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Kevin, also known as Kevin Moss 3 on uh, Atari Age. I want to thank James and everyone at Zero Page for hosting the annual uh, Homebrew Awards. Uh, you've been very gracious. Um, everybody who's played Kung Fu Combat 2 nominated and gave us a chance. It's really humbling and uh, an honor to have been in the awards alongside so many other great games. Uh, um, 
thanks to everyone. Our program continues to bring uh, new top quality games to our old systems. Uh, my wife, Kim, who's also a gamer, and it's very understanding during all the hours that I was dug into making those graphics. Uh, of course, Michael Thomason for producing the physical cartridges. And most of all, Ed for inviting me to be a uh, part of uh, the project with him. Uh, he was uh, really patient with me when I would ask for more features and more ROM. I think we started out with like 8K, if I remember right. And uh, I think we went to 16K for a short time and eventually expanded to 32. Wow. Uh, he really gave me a, a blank slate to make whatever scenes I wanted. It was just a lot of fun seeing what I could do with uh, just uh, double line play field graphics and background colors. And he pretty much gave me everything I wanted except for PF0. But uh, when all was said and done, I don't think anything would have turned out different, even if I had that to work with. So I really just can't praise that enough. Uh, he's made so many great games in such a short time, and he can really churn them out. It's been great work getting to work with him. So again, uh, just thank you to everyone who played the game, everyone who voted, and who continues to contribute to the scene. Thanks again, James, and uh, everyone on the stream. So congratulations. Okay. Yeah, the, the play field graphics that you achieved on this game is absolutely incredible. Some of the best play field graphics I've ever seen. Thanks a lot. And we also have a statement from Edward Smith, the, uh, the developer of the game. Uh, Hi, everybody. It was such a pleasant surprise to learn that Kung Fu Combat 2 had been noticed and appreciated enough to be nominated for this award. It is unexpected and super exciting that it won. I would like to thank the folks at Zero Page Homebrew for giving attention to my games. Thanks also goes to Michael Thomason at Good Deal Games for supporting my projects. I should also thank Albert at Atari Age for maintaining a platform for people like me to share our games. And to thank... To all those who have played the games, provided valuable feedback, and answered my programming questions, you are much appreciated. Finally, a credit for this award. Credit for this award goes to Kevin Mosley for being the main reason that the graphics for the game stand out. He is a true artist with 2600 graphics and blew me away with what he create, could create within the limitations of my programming abilities. Thanks again, Edward Smith. So congratulations to both of you. Outstanding work. Thank you so much, and see you online. Excellent, so what is up next, Darcy? It's the it's counterpart. Eight. It's number eight. <laughs> uh, Darcy, during the videos, um, said, this game has really good graphics, <laughs> as if it was a surprise. And I'm like- Unironically, un just un like- Unironically. Like, wow, yeah, these, these are really amazing. good graphics. And I'm like, yeah, it's the best graphics category. <laughs> so funny. So it's another audio, hmm? Zoom audio thing. And it's gonna, are we gonna have the same issue? It's the same person though. Oh, it, Nathan. We'll try again. It might, be, it might be different. So hopefully it'll be good this time. Um, uh, so the next category is, oh, also, what was I gonna say? Something else funny. I'll think or, about sorry, it. Sorry, we are number eight? We are number eight. Yes. Now. Next category is Atari 2600. Best graphics port this time. That's the one with ships, if you remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, ports with ships. Um, so this is the counterpart for the original. These are the games that are made from other games. So let's go to the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Graphics Port. Atari 2600 Best Graphics Port. Awakening. Dodge it. Ladybug Arcade.
Robot War 2684. Soul of the Beast. Square Raid. And we're back! So, let's see who came in third and second. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, Atari first. 2600, best graphics port. In third place, we have Soul of the Beast. Yeah. In second place, Ladybug Arcade. Woo! And the winner is Robot War 2684 by Champ Games, Jean Champo, Nathan Strum, David Brown, John Champo, and David Exton. Congrats! So if Nathan Strum could connect on Zoom again using the same information, we're going to text you through Zoom my phone number so that we can do it over the phone because Zoom is not cooperating. <laughs> So congratulations. Passcode, it's the same one. Uh, so anybody have the passcode from last time? Or Nathan have the passcode from last time? We'll give it out again if you guys don't have it. Oh, my hair's getting all greasy. It's from the hot lights. <laughs> we will get Nathan on though. We will. We will. And he has to give both speeches. <laughs> oh, oh, in the meantime, uh, Nathan has lost the passcode. Okay, um, and nobody else has it. Can you read it out again? I have to leave Zoom and... That's fine. I mean, leave okay. the meeting, sorry. That's fine. Um, so, I know the videos are coming in very loud. And the reason for that is they are pre-recorded and we can't s set the volume before we change over to them. So, so the they're... Passcode. Okay. Z. Z. Zero, one. Zero, one. N. N. Capital L. Capital L. X. S. X. X, not S. X at the end. Uh, no, we can't increase our volume. We're at max volume for our microphone and for the guests. So here's our dilemma. <laughs> Should we try? He can, he oh, he's connected. So he's he, muted. Tell him to oh, mute. Yeah, try and unmute. It says you're muted. That's probably why. So, uh, oh, now he's good. So, can we hear you, Nathan? Oh, switch over to him. Nathan? Nathan? Same no? No? Bueller? But no. as promised, we have him okay. connected. So, <laughs> yeah, we did connect to him. So, switch <laughs> back to us. Okay, um, so if you can type in the phone number to him. What phone number? Uh, mine. Do you memorize it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one memorizes See, phone numbers uh, anymore. Uh, when, with an award show like this, we're more careful about phone numbers than A some little bit things. more careful. <laughs> Not broadcasting my phone number to infinite possible people. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever watches the Twitch tra uh, Twitch stream or YouTube later, of course I could cut it out of the YouTube one later. So hopefully Nathan will be able to give us a call here. 
Yeah, he's going to have both his books. Excellent. Thank you, Nathan. We'll get you on one way or the other. There are various means, you know. You, the internet was meant to bypass... What was that? What's that saying? The internet is designed to bypass bad routes or something. It's like, oh, something fails, it finds a different route. Ah. But anyway, this is not the internet, it's the well, old phone you know. system. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Yeah, let's answer it before it says its phone number yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we on speaker? There not we go. Yet. Not yet. Nathan, are you on the line? Hello, Nathan. Welcome. Congratulations on the two awards. Glad to finally have you on. Thank you. Can people actually hear me this time? They should be able to. I've got the phone up to the microphone. So congratulations okay. on the two awards. Now you can combine combine the thanks together. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Uh, well, first of all, of course, I want to thank John for uh, his incredible programming and being... Uh, being willing to take on a project for uh, like Turbo Arcade, for example, um, which just stemmed from uh, some discussions we'd had while we were working on the Coleco prototype with Thomas and Dennis. And um, I threw together a couple of what if concepts, and however many years later, it's been almost 10 years, I guess, John decided to take it on. And um, what he ended up doing with the graphics on Turbo was far beyond anything I would have expected, even when I was mocking things up in Photoshop. And so it's kind of like my dream version of Turbo because I'd always been disappointed in, in Coleco's efforts. And um, it was kind of a, one of these dream come true things that, uh, you know, some of these programming and games that I had suggested. And that happened so rarely on Atari Age. So I'm really grateful to John for taking that on and putting the, the amount of work that he did into it. And uh, the community's response to it was just, you know, fantastic. I'm, I'm loving seeing all of the comments about that. So um, so there's the, there's the turbo speech. And then <laughs> um, as for Robot War, um, I, I posted a, a quick thank you in the chat, but, uh, you know, John did an incredible job on the graphics engine with that, just throwing, I think there's well over 100 objects on screen at the same time, which everybody has always said Robot, Robotron would be impossible on the 2600. But he pulled it off, um, especially with his brilliant use of the play field as, you know, some of the enemies and some of the obstacles and um that really made it all work. And so, you know, full credit to John for developing the graphics engine because even though it was a game one for graphics, um, without that engine, there wouldn't be a robot, a robot war. Um, and um, so it was a lot of fun working on that and seeing the game develop as, his, as he was developing all these things um, that made it work. And uh, also, huge credit goes to Eugene Jarvis and Larry Damar, the original programmers for the arcade version of Robotron, because, um, you know, I just adapted their sprites. I didn't have to create anything for the game, you know, and I was already working with these amazing, iconic graphics, and I just kind of had to tweak them a little bit to get them to fit into the game. So, full credit to them and, uh, and John, and then, uh, of course, um, the uh, sound was actually taken from the 7800 version, and the person's name escapes me at the moment, so I feel terrible about that. Um, and then uh, Dave Exton did the amazing packaging, packaging artwork for it. So it's, you know, the Champ Games are always a team effort, and it's fun working with these amazingly talented people. And uh, hope everybody has a lot of fun playing it. I uh, recommend that they go out and get a Quadtari and a couple of joysticks to play it properly. And uh, so thanks, everybody, for voting for the game. Thank you, Nathan. Both both games are m miracle working games. Like th they were both like impossible games on that impossible list that we always talk about. <laughs> Turbo because it's like a full screen movie playing on the 2600 frame by frame of the cityscape and everything and Robotron like you said hun like a hundred things on the screen at the same time. That's another impossible thing. I, I 
Champ Games tagline should be making the impossible possible on the 2600 or something like that because <laughs> it's just astounding the whole team every time. Yeah, well, thank you. And, and uh, again, full credit to John for just having the, in, the insight and the, the creativity to take on something like, you know, either of these games, really, and other games that we're working on, for that matter, you know. And um, I don't know what he's going to be able to pull off next, but I'm on board for it. Oh, you bet. We, and we can't wait. I'm sure everybody can't wait for the next magical, impossible game to be made. So thank you so much. I'm glad we got connected eventually, and congratulations on the two awards. Well, thank you very much, and thanks to Zero Page uh, for all that you guys do for putting the show on, for Atari Age and all the sponsors from the show, um, for everybody in the chat who's watching and um, patiently putting up with all of the... Uh, challenges of, of getting something like this put together. I know it's a tremendous amount of work on your end, and I think everybody's just having a lot of fun. So you bet. I'm just going to kick back and enjoy the rest of the show. You bet. So thanks so much, Nathan, and talk to you online. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, gr glad we were able to connect with Nathan. That is excellent. And the games are miracles. They're amazing, amazing games. Um, so next up, we're going to be talking with uh, one, another sponsor, Markspace, Inc., with Project uh, Argon. We're going to be talking with Andrew Mayer, Andy Green, and Brent Truex. I'm, I have to go over to Geo here for a second. Oh, you got it going. Excellent, because it's a, it's a little bit differently set up. It's a group chat on it. Ah. Um, so yeah, Project Argon is, well, they'll explain it better, but it's an emulator that you'll be able to play a lot of these games on and they're adding more and more all the time and it's unbelievable so let me get a earpiece in so we can hear them okay let's uh switch over welcome are you able to hear us and can oh hear there you? we go excellent welcome we have lift off we have left off. Welcome to Project Argon on the show, and thank you. It's such a big supporter of the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, it's great. I mean, this is, um, I guess it's your fourth year doing it, but it's our, our third year participating, and, and we've yeah. just loved it the whole time. Um, watching it grow so much, and, and it's, it's cool you added a new sponsor this year with a Atari Gamer and Lynx, so it's just great to see it grow. Um, and it's great to see you guys grow and, and keep adding new platforms to Project Argon as well. Absolutely. Um, Atari 5200 was new for us this year. And uh, those who have, are familiar with the 5200 know that Atari 800 is just a little bit more from there. So um, Atari That's 800 awesome. will be making an appearance uh, later, later this year. Excellent. Oh, it looks so like we have uh, Andy. Oh, somebody else joined as well. Welcome. Yep. yep. Andy's one of the engineers. Um, I don't think Brent is going to be joining us. Uh, Andy was on the show last year, too. Okay, excellent. So um, talk a bit about, for the people who don't know what Argon is, what it is and what it can do and what platforms you can put it on. Sure. So, so Argon is us bringing... Um, games of the 70s through the 90s to modern devices. So we have, and I'm, I'm doing the royal we here looking at, at Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We've been working really hard to bring it to as many different form factors and platforms uh, as possible. Uh, we support uh, Android phones, Android tablets, uh, Android TV. That's actually probably my, my favorite way to play. Wow. Uh, Chromebook, and then uh, after we exit beta, we'll be adding uh, Amazon and Windows 11. So basically, everywhere um, that you can bring a platform, we, we want to be part of. Excellent. So, w how do people play the games? Like, what kind of input uh, options are there? Because people are used to their controls, and you're looking at like a tablet or a phone. Yeah, maybe Andy wants to take that one. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> so yeah, well, uh, we, yeah, we have on-screen controls, and we are trying to produce the, the the optimal kind of layout for each of the each, each platform, and we can even customize the layout on a per game basis for some games which just don't use a button, for example, we don't, we're not forced to include that button regardless. Um, and we're, we're in the midst of, uh, of making it work really nicely on folding devices where you've got some interesting um, physical configuration issues where you are, the, the way you hold the thing, it, it, it's quite different from just a, a regular type of phone, for example. But we also support uh, Bluetooth controllers and um, USB controllers, um, anything pretty much that you would expect to be able to plug into uh, into one of these devices these days. Well, that's awesome. And I saw something about light guns. Now, how does that come into play? Ooh, that was that was kind of a secret, but no, <laughs> that's not all, it's all a secret. We've been, um, one of the things we've been doing lately, so two, two new initiatives, recent initiatives. One is the one um, Andy's working on where uh, he mentioned foldables. And for people who didn't quite get what that uh, refers to, there are devices like the Motorola Razor and the uh, Microsoft Surface Duo, where, oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where these devices can have uh, nice. multiple screens and, and different poses. So we've kind of um, been working on optimizing the user interface such that if you're playing on uh, the one that Andy was just showing is the Surface Duo, and that has uh, a pose that they call the laptop pose where it's kind of like you've got a screen that's facing you and then one lying flat. And so we've made it such that uh, when it's in that pose, the gameplay is on the top screen and the controls are on the bottom. And then because we've got so much room now to play with, you can have fun stuff like an Atari 5200 keypad can be present on that lower screen all the time. So some pretty cool stuff going on there. Then um, you're asking about light gun. That's the other initiative. Um, that's what Brent is working on. And uh, we're taking it such that uh, games that were originally written to support either a light pen or a light gun, uh, we'll be making them work. Oh, there you go. We'll be making them work with uh, touch input on mobile devices. Wow. Or if you have a modern light gun, and there are a couple of different companies working. Um, uh, AE is one of them, and then Sindin in the UK um, will eventually be supporting uh, light guns on modern TVs. So the, the cool example that we're doing there is, um, folks may remember a game that Tom Hudson had done for uh, analog computing way, way back when, and he updated it about 10 years ago uh, to support touch. So we're working on doing that. So you'll actually be able to tap the screen to launch your uh, missiles. And then mm -hmm. internally, uh, we've been experimenting with the Atari 5200 version of uh, Missile Command. And uh, with touch input, uh, Android supports up to 10 simultaneous inputs. So we've wow. been uh, trying to see if we can feed all 10 uh, into the game. <laughs> I think the game <laughs> may only let you uh, have maybe, two, it was either two or four missiles flying at a time, but it's actually, it's pretty magical to see, you know, you, you tap four spots and you launch, you know, or hopefully launch four missiles. So that's that's some of the, the, the wacky uh, stuff. And, and you kind of ask like, what what is Argon about? And I guess that's maybe an example. Like we are trying to um, embrace the fact that we're on modern devices really take advantage of, of everything that they offer um, to make the games, you know, as cool as they can be. Yeah. And it, and it sounds like these modern devices like phones make it easier than other types of emulators to have the variety of inputs that you're able to have because there's a touch screen uh, to play these games that have variety of different controller types. Well, we're we, like we can abstract them and then present them to the uh, to the console, and they just don't know the difference. So, so Atari fifty two hundred is kind of interesting in that the default input is an analog joystick, and I guess historically that controller was perhaps considered a weak point of the system, but for us it actually ends up being a really cool advantage because that's what lets us do the cool stuff with planetary defense or missile command is that when you're touching the screen, we can just map that to an XY coordinate that the uh, analog controller would have presented to the hardware. 
but at the yeah. same time, one of the games that it was actually more geared towards a digital input, we can present it with purely digital inputs without you slopping a virtual analog stick around and, and cursing the fact that they made that design choice back in the, in the day. Yeah, very, very flexible. Yep. So where yep. can people, what do people search for to find your app? Is it Argon, Project Argon, MarkSpace? Let them know so, how you can find it. So we, uh, we've dropped the project. It's just a straight up Argon now. And it's available um, in public beta form on Google Play. Um, we are hopefully, you know, close to, to exiting beta. And when we exit beta, uh, the next spots we would be adding would be uh, Amazon, which would then be like Amazon Fire tablets, Amazon Fire TV, and uh, Windows 11. So that's a, that's a little further out. But right now it's on Google Play, and that gets you uh, Android phone, tablet, TV, and Chromebook. That's excellent. And we did something, I think, new this year with the Atari Homebrew Awards where we put the nominated games specifically on Argon including games, uh, especially for links that were not available publicly and put them on Argon for a limited time for people to evaluate, which was very, very unique and it was awesome of the Lynx uh, uh, developers to, to allow to do that. So it was awesome yep. uh, cross collaboration. Yep, that's, that's a new feature we added. Um, I guess that was about last November. So we can now, um, on server side, we can add new categories to the UI. And so for, for this event, we added a nice uh, zero page homebrew category. And uh, there were a couple of developers. Um, you mentioned the links ones, uh, Yastuna Links um, was able to give us um, permission to include his commercial versions as uh, Argon digital exclusives through the end of February. So. Um, we're really excited about the new like collaboration uh, possibilities that this is this is offering. Yeah. And I can see that going forward in the next year and building upon that. And I, I think that's really, really yep. great to be able to offer really that. Good. And you put a tab in Argon that says Atari Homebrew Awards specifically so people can see what what the entries were. So that was yep. that was really, really awesome. And because you support so many platforms, it makes it really easy to pre for people to evaluate them all in one place. Absolutely. I mean, the, the one um, that that is up next, Atari 800, that's, I guess that was the only platform uh, that we didn't have in time for the show, yeah. but that is uh, underway. And uh, I'm super excited about that one. That was my, my first love, uh, as it were, was the Atari yeah. 800. So. And now you're going to have to get to work on Jaguar because we're adding Jaguar next year <laughs> to the award yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's probably wincing. Oh, but yeah, and Jaguar is really uh, interesting from an emulation standpoint. There are um, there are a variety of projects that have maybe gotten, say, 80, 90 percent of the way there. So it's not impossible to do, but, um, you know, so. If, uh, at the point where we were to do it, we'd have to get it to that hundred percent level because we we don't we don't put it out until it's uh, you know ready right. for prime time. So they'll so that one would perhaps be more work than many of the other ones that we've done to date. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you once again for sponsoring the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, the, we couldn't present the awards without the, all the amazing sponsors, including you. So I want to thank you so much. Well, we're just so glad you give us the opportunity to participate in this way. So, so thanks a lot. And thanks to the other sponsors. And uh, certainly to all the amazing games that came out this year. I mean, this was, it's just shocking how, how, how many games uh, were, were produced in 2021 and that you, you track them all. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a daily job, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Yeah, Tracking it is. all these games across yeah. now even Jaguar, the Jaguar platform. But I get a lot of help from the community. So it's not too bad. So thank you once again. And thank you for coming on. And thank you for sponsoring. And everybody check out Argon. It's a great way to play New Homebrew. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, guys. Uh, yes, one of our cameras is out. Um, welcome to live again. Um, it overheated.
Um, make sure the screen is away from the camera as far as possible. It is. It, okay. It just, it, it, it was, there was a warning on it. Yeah. There's not much you can do, so. Yeah, that's why I have a different camera for my main camera. That's more of a photo camera that went out. Mine is more a filming camera. It, it, it's but cooling down it, pretty fast. So we're going to go with the close-up yeah. for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, the wide is on the interviews, set for the interviews. So mm -hmm. if we're going to go to an interview until it's cooled down, it's just going to be, you don't have to see our terrible, ugly faces. Um, so the next category is Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original. So this is everything you hear. We did everything you see. Now this is all the music, the sound, the beeps, the bloops, the, the music that goes along, the intro music, anything you hear. Um, and there's some incredible... Um, TIA musicians that are cranking out sound, music that sounds nothing like what you think a TIA sound is supposed to sound like. It's actually on tune now! Because <laughs> the TIA is the sound chip in the 2600. What they did is they took this tone to this tone and went, yeah, we'll just divide that up by 128. <laughs> or whatever it is, 64, 128, don't quote me on that. And some of them are actually close to notes. <laughs> so <laughs> composing music on the TIA is a huge challenge. And people have found ways to wor work around that, either by going between two notes to get that in-between mm. sounds, like one, and mm -hmm. you get that sound, or adding chips onto the uh, cartridges to enhance and be able to get more out of the TIA. And some of the things that are happening are unbelievable now, and it's gonna get even better in the future. I've got some insider information, <laughs> and uh, you'll see it on the show. It's mind-blowing what's coming up for the 2600. So we're gonna to go to the next nominees, which are Atari 2600, a best music and sound on an original game, and here are the nominees. Atari 2600, best music and sound original, Electroball. Ethereum 2600 Game of the Bear Mr. Yo-Yo. <laughs> Slide Boy in Mazeland. Zark Stars. So, our wide camera's back. 
Yeah, it's cooled down. <laughs> For now. <laughs> okay, Darcy. Who, uh... Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original. In third place, Mr. Yo-Yo. In second place, Electro Ball. Yay! Hey. Uh, <laughs> the winner, Zark Stars, A Space Saga. By Woo! Leonardo... Lin Leandro uh, Camara. No, he's giving me pronunciations for a lot of names here. So it's Camara. Leandro Camara. Camara. Yep. Uh, Ethor. Ethor. Maciel. Maciel. Vivian. Pesabes. Pesabes. And Kenny Schmidt. Yeah, that's that's an easier one for us. <laughs> so congratulations. <laughs> Nice and we have a written acceptance speech uh, from Leandro Camera, and I profusely apologize for mispronouncing your name for years. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to him when I answered him. He says, wow, it's such a big surprise to be awarded in this year's awards. Many thanks to the nomination committee for the four Zark Stars nominations. I was really delighted to know that I would be participating this year again in the awards. Thank, I will have to thank my mentor, Ethar Maciel, who taught me how to put the necessary commands in the code to create Zarkstar's music. This award is also his. As most Atari fans already know, the 2600 has only two audio channels, and programming for the console is always a matter of choice and a constant challenge. I prefer to use both channels simultaneously and almost exclusively just to create the background track for the games in the Zarkstar saga, which, is not a, which was not a very common in games at the time. I'm glad most of you liked the result. Many thanks go to Daniel Medina for testing NTSC consoles while I'm living in Portugal, and to Leonardo Santiago for building the cartridge hardware. Thank you all so much for the award. So congratulations once again, Leandro Camera for that. Yes. And the next category is Atari 2600. <clears throat> Best music and sound port. So let's check out the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Port. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and Under Port. Dodge It. Soul of the Beast. back. Uh, people are telling us that we have played the wrong video. <laughs> Dan in the control booth. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's... Let me try and get the right video. So, which number are we on? 10. ten. Okay. Well, there is no number 10. That That's could be an issue. Problem. That's a problem. Oh, it's out of order. Did you do that one? Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Port Awakening
Dodge it. Ladybug Arcade. Robot War 2684. Beast. Square Raid. It's always better when you play the right video, <laughs> especially video with games that have music. So uh, for a category with the best music. Okay, so let's see who is the winners, yes. are the winners. So to clarify, Atari 2600 best music and sound port. Taking this out, this makes me crazy. Uh, and in third place, we have Soul of the Beast. Congratulations. Yay. In second place, we have Ladybug Arcade. And winner, we have Robot War 2684 by Champ Games, John Champo, Nathan Strum, David Brown, John Champo, and David Exton. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo. And we have John on the line. So, Joe, we do. Welcome, John. Yay. Congratulations. Hey, how's it going? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, John and almost John wasn't Champagne. able to make it, but he did. So, thank you so much, John. Yeah, yeah, we had a little fire and ice festival in my old hometown, but uh, we couldn't get reservations for dinner. So, we ended up uh, making them for tomorrow. So, for those who don't know, oh, it's uh, it's Valentine's Day uh, weekend here. That's so, true. Uh, <laughs> poor planning on our part. <laughs> very poor. Well, I mean, Tanya obviously likes to play uh, video games, so I'm sure that's just that's a normal right. Thing this this is her so. Valentine's Day day. Oh, right? thanks. Yeah, exactly. uh, no, we, we're, we're doing something uh, tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So con good. Anyway, <laughs> congratulations, John. Uh, great oh, thank you. work on the sound. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, um, um, David Brown actually did most of the sounds. He's uh, Al had mentioned him in the uh, in the chat. He's uh. He's the one that did the uh, 7800 sounds, so I kind of cheated there. I'm, I'm no sound expert, so I'm taking this, uh, accepting this award on his behalf. Um, I did do a few of the sounds, um, the uh, startup sound and the high score sound um, music tune, and a few of the other sounds and tweaked a few things, but um, certainly have to give credit, most of the credit to uh, David Brown and the excellent work that he did on the uh, 7800 version. Um, I'd like to thank a few other people. I um, want to thank uh, Bob DiCrescenzo, a.k.a. Pac-Man Plus. Um, I had reached out to him when I was developing uh, Robot War. Um, 
and uh, he helped me uh, get in, set up a 7800 development system, which allowed me to steal the sounds. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that was actually fun. I wrote a little utility that was, looked up all the tables and pulled the sound data right from the, uh, the ROM and was able to uh, use that pretty pretty easily. So I uh, want to thank Bob for that. And while, while I have him talking about Bob, I also want to um, congratulate him for a second place on uh, Ladybug Arcade Sounds. Um, he did a great job with those as well, and oh, yeah. as well with the uh, original version that was released in 2006. So thanks, Bob. You never disappoint with sounds, and uh, <laughs> I certainly uh, have learned from you. So um, I also want to thank um, the Atari Museum, of all people. Um, oh. That's where we actually found the robot, the Robotron 700 source code. So certainly without that, I couldn't have uh, gotten the uh, data to, to use in this game. So, um, so certainly uh, thanks thanks to them as well. So um, that's, I think that's all I have to say about the 7800, I mean, the uh, Robot War sounds. Um, I think they work very well with the game. Um, the TAA um, certainly a challenge to develop for, but um, um, Certainly, I, I was able to learn a lot um, from the people, uh, from David and from Bob, and then certainly uh, um, add my own small contribution to them as well. So he was accepting that award on their behalf, and thank you, everyone. Well, thank you so much, John. Uh, awesome work, as always, uh, and the sounds on Robotron are very unique, so um, it's uh, great sounds on that game. So congratulations. Wonderful. Thanks I appreciate it. In. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, guys. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hooray. Uh, so the next uh, category is Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew. And they share a category because they share uh, a common hardware. So we put them together because not a lot of 5200 is made each year. Um, but this year was an exception. Like I said at the top of the show, tons of 5200 was made. So we'll see next year, hopefully, yeah, echo in my ear as well. <laughs> hopefully some more will be made next year and we can uh, uh, have some more on the nominated list. So uh, the nominees for Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew are... Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew. Albert Final Assault Flob. Yasek. Prince of Persia.
the children. Yep. yep. Okay. Right. So. So. Oh, we fancy. Have Atari 8 bit 50. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Atari 8 bit 5200 best homebrew. And in third place, we have Final Assault. Congratulations. Woo! In second place, we have Flob. And winner for Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew is Prince of Persia Ooh. by Ren Soup, Constantinos Gia Mal Maladis, Miker, Vin School, MK, Makari, Superoon, and Jordan Mechner for the original game. Yes. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations. So I didn't get uh, to hear back from um, Ren Soup in time, so I will be accepting his award on his behalf. Well, I want it. Oh, Darcy stole it. <laughs> Sorry, Ren Soup. Um, so we'll get in touch with Ren Soup and get him his award after. Yes. So congratulations. congratulations. Uh, Prince of Persia is uh, an outstanding achievement if you've never played it. Definitely download it and yes. give it a try. It's it's unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. So we our next thing up is another one of our sponsors, and we have a pre-recorded video uh, from Igor Chromin, and this is our sponsor Atari Gamer. Who, if you go to their website, it's all about the links. If you want to know anything about the links or what games are out, what games are coming up, who made what, it's got a huge database and is all the resources for you. So let's check out what Igor has to say about Lynx. Hi Atari fans, this is Igor from atarigamer.com and I'm here to do a small introduction to the Atari Lynx homebrew scene. Thanks to James from Zero Page Homebrew for having me on the stream and let's get started. So Atari Lynx came out in 1989, the first color console of its time and this is the Model 1 bit chunky, very industrial looking. Um, it was shortly followed by a Model 2, a bit more rounded, I think more pleasant to look at. And there were 71 games officially released for the console. Um, the homebrew scene on the Lynx started off with some ugly looking cartridges like this. So this is where uh, EPRO would go and you would get, they usually were soldered in like that and exposed PCBs, very chunky, heavy. It did improve with you know, smaller uh, flash chips, bit, pretty, bit more pretty looking, but still, on the most part, they still were kind of chunky and ugly. Uh, then there was a bit of a development from Kari uh, from Finland who created his own miniature style card and of course like compared to the official card it looks very similar um, 3D printed of course uh, a bit different on the back but it could come in any color uh, would hold up to 500k of ROM um, and the scene kind of quickly improved from there. There were major releases like Wyvern and Tails. Um, again, this is a 3D printed cartridge, but it's a curved lip, just like the original, and it's an excellent game as well. Uh, what's really interesting is to see some of the re-releases that happened with companies like Songbird Productions. And here we see 
this original Ponks, followed by the pre-release version on Curvelet Cart. These are no longer 3D printed, they are injection molded, so very professional looking. And again, things started to just improve and improve um, with the releases coming out like unnamed uh, with a box that looks very much like the original Lynx box. This is again from Songbird Productions. Uh, and then other players on the scene came along as well with Yastuna Games, who released amazing looking boxes like this. This is Yingsa, the deluxe edition. And inside you will find, let's see. So there's a poster, there's the, the game box itself, there's a map pack, there's a 3D printed stand, and there's uh, another cartridge of the game that was released as part of the game jam. So very cool. Um, then in terms of flash cuts and ROMs, uh, it all started with Retro HQ's Lynx SD, like this. This was a pretty slow card. Um, this was aimed at the consumer. Of course, there were some flashcards before this that were aimed at the developers, but we won't mention those. Um, then Agacard came along. This takes micro SD card on the side there. Um, and it was faster than the Lynx SD. Of course, I forgot to mention it takes an SD card there. Um, after a few years of the Lynx SD kind of dominating the market, uh, the Lynx GD was released. And this is a prototype version, but uh, the final version looks very much similar. It's much, much faster at loading ROMs. Um, and the menu for it looks a lot better too. And then of course, Ben Ben came along on the scene, releasing his El Cheapo SD flash card that again takes an SD card over there. And you can load up all of your ROMs, play them from there. It's fast loading as well. Very cool. Um, in terms of programming your own ROMs, uh, what we did at the Atari Gamer is we've re-released some of the original programmers. So this is Raspberry Pi based. You put in your cartridge there and you program it through the command line. Again, then Ben Ben came along with his Joey Links, and this is a USB-C device where you can put a flash cartridge in like this. Thing. and connect it to USB and then drag and drop your own. Very easy. Um, and that's kind of where the scene is. It's thriving. Uh, there are more people coming along. And as you can see by these homebrew award nominations, there are many great games being made. Uh, if you are into making games, we've launched atarilinksdev.net, which is a wiki which has a lot of the programming resources and hopefully that'll get you started coding some cool new games. Now, back over to James. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Igor, for giving that awesome explanation about everything Lynx. So if you're interested, go check out the webpage um, of Atari Gamer. So next up, fittingly, is Atari Lynx Best Homebrew, which is a new category. Uh, so here are the nominees for Atari Lynx Best Homebrew. Atari Lynx Best Homebrew. Asteroids Chasers. Raid on Tri-City Second Wave.
Sky Raider Redux. Unnamed. Jump two. YNXA. So, all right. So, for the category of Atari Lynx Best Homebrew, in third place we have a tie. A tie. Sky Raider Redux and Jump Two. And in second place we have Unnamed. Uh. And winner for Atari Lynx Best Homebrew YNXA. Yay. Yay! And that's by Frederick Descharmes. Graphics by Cronebits, Elfin, and Frederick Descharmes. And music by J.P. Guerin and Frederick Descharmes. And we have Frederick on the line right now. Let me take out my earbuds. Both of them. Here you go, if yep. you'd like one. Thank you very much. And I think we're good. So let's switch over to Frederick. Welcome, Frederick. Congratulations on your win for Best Atari Lynx Homebrew. Hello. Thanks. Thanks you for um, for hiding the Atari Lynx. This, that's very strange. I have <laughs> so I have a uh, four or five seconds uh, difference from the oh, Twitch and yeah. the Skype. Definitely so thanks you for hiding uh, Atari Lynx uh, this year and. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Inksa won the, the first Atari Lynx award. And uh, this was a great year for Lynx, many great games. Uh, even the games that did not make uh, the cut for the nomination were uh, very great. So if you like the Atari Lynx, I suggest that, suggest, sorry, that you uh, give a look to all the 10 games. They were very good. Yes. Yeah, v great group of uh, Lynx games, a great development uh, community there. And I'm so happy to add Lynx into the mix of the awards. So we're very happy to have them on board this time. So congratulations and uh, thank you for coming on, Frederick. Yes, yeah, thanks. So I'd like to thank, just before leaving, all the people that made it possible to, um, to code on Lynx. So uh, it was many years ago, but uh, 42BS, Bastian, Mathias Domine, Ben Thomas, who made the first flashcard, who helped us a lot. Carrie Kaxonen, 
Carl from Songbird, of course, and Igor from Atari Gamer, because if we have so many games this year, last year, and we have even better and more games in 2022, it's also because Igor started to um, renew the scene with the contest, the 30s. 30 years contest and uh, last year and each um, Christmas now we have a contest and great ombus that uh, are coming from here Sky Raiders, Inksa, Astori Chasers this year uh, next year there will be Red uh, and some other I guess so uh, so thank you and have fun with, uh, with the links thank you so much we will so thank you for coming on and congratulations see you Thanks. online Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So uh, is, I'm so happy to add Lynx in and Jaguar next year to encompass more of the Atari games. Yep. So the next category up is Atari Best Packaging. And we have moved this from just Atari 2600 Best Packaging into everything because really packaging is neutral across it's not the game it's not the platform it's the box and everything that comes with it so we've included all of the different atari platforms for this so the nominees for atari best packaging are atari best packaging asteroids chasers Dagger Quest Bialani Kung Fu Combat 2 Robot War 2684 YNXA Sark Stars timing uh this is number uh 13 number 13 yeah yep there. there's your answer darcy <laughs> <laughs> so this is for <laughs> best packaging <laughs> go for it okay so atari <laughs> best packaging in third place inksa yeah we know the pronunciation now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. in second place <laughs> robot war 2684 <laughs> And winner for Atari Best Packaging, Zark Stars A Space Saga by Leandro Camera, yep. uh, Hator Messiel, Vivienne Pisabes, Pisabes, Pisabes. Uh, and Kenny Schmidt. Congratulations! Yay. And we have a thank you here uh, from Leandro. Can you take that? Yeah. Uh, Le Leandro Camera. Uh, one more prize. Many thanks to everyone who voted for Zark Stars. Packaging is an important part of the game for us. Normally, the player's experience begins when they receive the box and all the printed materials that complete the game in their hands. Thanks to Viviani Pesabes, my wife, who helped me with the ideas, text, and supervising the design of Zark Stars. And to my illustrator and great friend, Kenny Schmidt, who is doing the illustrations for the saga with me. Thanks also to the programmer of Odyssey, Rafael Cardoso, who was the inspiration for Zark Stars 1 with one of his games, alongside Laser Gates, Vanguard, and Planet Patrol. I can see those influences. Mm -hmm. And Lucas Jusweak for the support with the videos for the games and the care with sending the cartridges to the owners. I cannot fail to always thank my parents, who gave me an Atari 2600 in 1984 when I was 10 years old. Atari was new in Brazil, and had been officially launched in the country a year earlier when the company was already in decline in the U United States. Back then, in a third world country, such a console was very, very expensive. 
I'm grateful for the effort they put in to be able to buy a console like this for me and my brother, and during the following years, some good games that influence me creatively to this day. Thanks to James, Tanya, Darcy, and Erilyn, and the Zero Page Homebrew for keeping the show going all this time. Uh, thanks to you and these awards, the quality of homebrews have improved significantly in the recent years. I hope you guys stick with the show. This makes us on this side. Give us, give it our best for Atari. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the Bat Batari team, the creators of Stella Emulator and the Harmony Cartridge. Without them, most of these games would not exist. You are the true heroes of this award. And for those who liked this beginning of Space Saga, I would like to tell you that the second game in the saga, Zark Stars 2 Ground Force, will have its pre-order list starting next week. And the game will have its debut on Zero Page Homebrew on March 15th in a show dedicated entirely to the saga. Hope everyone likes it. Thank you so much again for the award. No problem, Le Leandro Camara. Yeah. Camara. Uh, your congratulations. So, the next category is Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Original. So let's take a look at the nominees for... Oh, wait, before we go to the video, Darcy has reminded me to turn down your speakers before every video we play, <laughs> because we can't change them beforehand. Very sorry. Um, so remember, as soon as it flips over, turn it down, then turn it back up. Anyway, um, Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original, here are the nominees. Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Original Adventures of Ollie Troll EXO Night Guy in Low Res Castle Days Slide Boy in Mazeland 7800. Wizard's Dungeon. And the winners are... All right, I'll give you that. So for the best 7800, Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Original, in third place, we have Wizard's Dungeon. And in second place, Night Guy in Low Res Castle Days. And winner, we have EXO by Muddy Vision, Lewis Hill, and Bobby Clark. And we have Lewis on the line with us. Welcome, Lewis. Congratulations. Great stuff. Thank you, James. Thank you, Tanya. Appreciate that. So I think with EXO, um, it, it's been quite the journey um, getting that one complete. I think I've worked on that for 
around about 20 months. Um, it's been, it was an, a, a, quite an epic undertaking. I think in hindsight, I bit off perhaps a, a little bit more than I could chew. Um, <laughs> and it was really just started as an experiment. It started as a 48K ROM as an experiment. I was learning how to do uh, map files. One of the great features that Mike put into 78 Basic was um, the ability to take um, map files from Tiled, uh, an external app. Uh, and one thing led to another. And, and the, gr the game grew around that feature. Um, and I really got into that, 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 that aspect. With EXO, I think one of the things I, I really want to say is, uh, is a huge, massive thank you to, to Bobby Synth Papalooza, because we started talking about the music for EXO uh, very early into the, into the process of, of the game developing. And we got one world, the bones of a world that was starting to take shape. Um, and, and that grew from there, and we ended up with five worlds. We ended up with we started with a couple of tunes, and, and Bobby ended up creating fifteen, one five, fifteen, absolutely fabulous tunes of such different types, you know, and, and they fit each world amazingly. Um, and I have to say, I think Bobby's music um, makes EXO the game that it is. That. I can't understate that contribution to, to what we have here. And I want to say a massive thank you to Bobby. I also want to say um, a huge thank you to my three musketeers, um, Jesse, Steve and Robert, um, who have tested every different build that we've put out. They found the bugs that were so obscure. Some of them I couldn't even re reproduce. It, we took days and days and days to reproduce some of the bugs that Jesse found. Um, <laughs> that's cross, Crossbow, S, Rami Res, and Treeball um, by their forum handles. Um, the, the feedback and testing that those guys did was, was absolutely fantastic. And again, they helped to make EXO the game that it, that it is today. Um, I, I know we started out with the game being really hard, and they helped me with, with tuning and the bits that were too 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 difficult and, and getting that into into a good spot um and they also provided lots of feedback on sometimes little features like the the engines on the craft i mean that was one of jesse's ideas and it was like yeah okay we can run with that do i have enough cycles do we have enough rom space yeah we can fit that in and it, and it worked and, and also all the folks in the forums that have tested and provided feedback and also james for for running it on the show um i know you and tanya have played through some of the worlds and, and had some good fun with it and, and Seeing my game played on on your stream is is it, it, it's really nice. It's really cool. Um, and just you know, the the whole category. There were so many really good um, entries. Um, I mean, Vlad's entries with Night Guy, Walter, with um, with with his game there, the um, the tro Ollie Troll game, um, and also Wizards Dungeon. I mean, these are all fantastic games. You know, um, and I want to say um, you know, thank you to everyone that considered the XO and voted for it. Yeah, so congratulations. Yeah, it was a tough field. 7800's getting is heating up. That's for sure. Yep. I, I so. have what, what, one, one more thank you I have to say. Um, otherwise, I'm probably going to get shot when I go downstairs later. Mrs. Hill, Mrs. H, um, thank <laughs> you for all the tea, all the tea and snacks. <laughs> yeah, keeps, keeps you powered. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. So thank you so much, and congratulations, EXO, is, is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. so the next category is Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port. So here are the nominees for Atari 20, 7800 Best Homebrew Port. Oh! Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port 2048 Dragon's Descent
Galaxian. Popeye seventy eight hundred. Unawar S. Let's find out. Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port. In third place, we have Dragon's Descent. Yay! In second place, we have Galaxian. In first place, uh, the winner, Popeye 7800 Port. Yay! By 20th Street Arcade, Daryl Genther. Genther. Uh, Bobby Clark, Matt Smith, Pat Brady, Trebor, Tre Trebor Mike Sar Sarna, Matt Smith, Paul Lay, Perry Thwente, yeah. uh, Marco Sabetta, uh, Atari Boy 2600. Yay! Hooray! Congratulations! Oh, he's here? Oh, we almost missed him. He, we were trying to contact him. So we're going to talk with Daryl here. Oh, is he coming? Yeah. Big smiley face. Okay, so hold for a moment. Yes, every time we go to a video, make sure you turn down the volume. It's very loud. Oh, we're coming. We're getting there. We're almost there. Here comes Daryl. You have your... <laughs> oh, yeah. You can hear peace. So we can hear him. Oh, I see his face. Daryl, welcome. Congratulations. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm well. Yeah. All right. I see a previous award in the background there. I'm well. Good, good, good. So congratulations. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not very good with uh, speaking and stuff. <laughs> it's okay. So I thought I'd, I'd, I thought I'd have props. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like pro a prop comic, oh. you know, helps them get through the show. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, Popeye and, and the people you worked with. Oh, man, it's so long ago now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm sorry. I hear myself. Um, oh. So, uh yeah. Oh, you probably want to mute the stream. That's probably what you're hearing. Mute the stream. Where do I mute the stream? On the Twitch right, stream. Let's see. On the Twitch stream. Gotcha. That's yeah. the problem. It's in the computer. Okay, I get it. <laughs> All right. The files are in the computer. All in right. the computer? <laughs> All right, so now it sounds normal. I didn't know who I was answering or what question. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, I see. That makes more sense. Yes. I mean, you did start off so, with that, uh, I'm really awkward on camera, and then it went really <laughs> awkward. I'm like, it wasn't like this last time. What happened? Right. <laughs> now we're, 
now I'm I'm focused. All right. Well, no, at Popeye, man, that started off as my first project. I had the mini game that I released, um, and you played it on Zero Page Homebrew, and I was so afraid that I was going to get laughed off because it wasn't Popeye, and that was a key thing that that you emphasize. He wants you to know this is not Popeye. (laughs) (laughs) So um, just everybody was so encouraging, and it's so much fun. I think Lewis said it's so much fun to watch you, uh, Tanya, and Darcy. I I, I keep getting confused, Tanya or Tanya. (laughs) She accepts either one. (laughs) Yeah, I know. What what her mom named her or what she likes. And, (laughs) and, uh, oh, man, it's just so fun to watch and all the enthusiasm behind it. I was really surprised this year because I didn't expect, you know, I thought all the steam's out by now and there's so many good games that are competing and when i have to stop and think well do i want to vote for my game or do i want to vote for this game then there's a lot of good competition so (laughs) yeah so um uh rev ang mk smith you know with their environments it couldn't have done it without them and all their support synth pop palooza man the games just shine you know that that extra sound uh, brings, you know, brings the games alive. Playsoft has been there from the beginning. He got me encouraged with the hacks and everything that I started off with. And uh, Tep three ninety two, Pat Brady, Trevor S Ramirez, they were a lot of help in also helping with the music and testing a lot. Um, and then Pat Brady also worked on Pengo too so and he's a whiz with the the tia sound so that's uh that's something that uh is awesome then uh, you know atari boy 2600 did the artwork defender 2600 and kevin moss helped with some tweaks in the graphics which you know at the time you know i wanted to do it all you know and i was but then i see that what they added and i look at it now and i'm like man i'm so glad that they (laughs) they helped and, and took it to the next level. So it's, it's been a fun journey and thank you for everybody that voted for it. And that's uh, I really didn't expect it. Thanks to my family and friends who have supported me when I neglected my duties because I was stuck in the zone and didn't want to get up from the computer. You know, <laughs> it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Excellent. So congratulations on Popeye. It's a super fun game to play. And I'm, a lot of these games that are winning and have been nominated are like almost like the default perfect port of the arcade. So I'm, it's, it's just amazing. Everybody should go out and play all these games. They're amazing. So thank you for coming on and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Bye-bye. Bye. See you online. Okay, um, so when we were going through um, the Lifetime Achievement Awards through, with the nomination committee this year, some names popped up uh, that they, the people unfortunately passed away. And it was suggested that we put together something in the Atari Homebrew Awards for those people that are no longer with us that were in the community. Um, So I put together an in memoriam video uh, for those people that are no longer with us. So let's uh, take a look at that. And check your volume. And check your volume.
Um, so it's, it's unfortunate that they're no longer with us, but their uh, contributions live on and we can enjoy all the things they gave to us um, during the time that they were here. And I also want to uh, mention uh, Pixel as well, who's no longer with us. He was a big part of the show. Um, he, if you didn't know, he was our, our, our cat along with Atari. They were the best of friends. Um, but Pixel passed away a couple months ago, so I just wanted to say something about Pixel. Um, so I wanted to thank again the nomination committee for suggesting that and doing everything that they did to leading up to the awards. They were instrumental in making this happen. I, the Atari Awards, Homebrew Awards, would not happen without them because they put their time and effort into going through yeah. the hundreds of games and evaluating each one against another and voting for the ones they thought were the best. And it took a lot of time and effort so I want to thank the nomination committee a ton for doing that. And I, I just couldn't do it without them. So there were dozens of people behind the scenes um, helping out with this. So uh, the next award is voted on by the nomination committee. It's not a public vote. This one is just uh, the evaluation of the nomination committee. And it is for the Lifetime Achievement Award. And it is for the cumulative uh, efforts of somebody that is put into the community to do with homebrew and Atari. And these people are recognized for all the things that they've done, either software, hardware, support, anything in that realm. So there was quite a long list of names that uh, were being voted on because there's a lot of people that contribute a ton to this. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look. Well, there is no nominees for this because it's, it's just who it is. But we do have a little intro video for this. Um, so let's roll the intro and then we'll be talking with the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award. Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay, so Hey. Um, yeah, it should be written. Lifetime Achievement Award in third place. <laughs> Just third, kidding. second, and first. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, Fred Quimby. Congratulations, Fred Quimby. Amongst other things, he is the creator of Batari Basic for the 2600, the developer of the incredible Harmony cart for the 2600, the Concerto cart for the 7800, and the upcoming Pokey replacement for the chip. A uh, pokey replacement ship called the Hokey, amongst numerous other things. You may know him better as Batari on the Atari Age forums, Fred Quimby. Welcome to the show, Fred. Hi. Congratulations, Fred. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's very moving to come after that um, touching tribute to all those who have passed. Mm. Um, and so on that, the first person I want to thank is is Nuki Shea, because he is the one who um, I I lurked for a while on Atari Age, but it was his contributions that got me to finally join and start contributing to the community. Um, and then I kind of went from there. I created Atari Basic and uh, eventually the Harmony card. Um, and eventually Concerto, I worked on that for almost 10 years before it was actually released. Wow. Um, so the list of people to thank is pretty much endless. I've been, you know, <laughs> I I've, I've, yeah, I mean, you say this is a lifetime achievement award. Um, it's kind of ironic cause I've been on Atari age for probably a third of my lifetime now. Um, um, so, first and foremost, the person I would like to thank is Albert Yeruso for creating Atari Age. Um, without Atari Age, of course, I think a lot of us wouldn't even, wouldn't even be here. It's kind of created the community that uh, I love so much. Um,
Second, I would like to thank um, Nathan Strum. Um, even though he's not a programmer, he's, his art is just amazing, and I'm impressed with it all the time. Um, especially because I think I actually have negative artistic talent because <laughs> my, my art is so bad, it makes other people's art worse. <laughs> but then to see somebody who comes on here and uh, selflessly uh, contributes his art to um, to the hobby. It's just, it's, it's a really great thing, especially because, you know, I can respect somebody who can do something that I definitely can't do. Um, <clears throat> and I'd also like to thank Mike Sarna. Um, Mike Sarna has been... Um, one of the most prolific 7,800 um, homebrewers out there. And I appreciate the 7,800 basic a lot because it's created so many new homebrew games. Um, and same, I had started with this 2,600, but I had a 7,800 um, back in the day too. So it's my second favorite console. Um, and that's why I, was, I spent a lot of time devoted to that console as well. And what's been taking up most of my time lately is Hokie. And <clears throat> the challenge with Hokie is that I feel that homebrews, they, they need to be like affordable. And you can't put a hundred dollar sound chip on a homebrew. So it's been the biggest challenge with Hokie is getting it to be cost effective. Um, and I'm always developing homebrew things. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is, um, due to the chip shortage, um, it's been getting harder to find the chips for melody boards. So, um, things being what they are, I've redesigned the melody board and what this is, um, I plan to make this reverse compatible with existing melody boards, except the good thing about this is the existing melody board supports 32K of flash and 8K of RAM. Um, this supports up to 16 megabytes of program space plus 256K of RAM. So hopefully it's enough that we would never run out, but I'm not going to do a Bill Gates and <laughs> um, say that uh, people aren't going to figure out a way to use it eventually. So we'll see. Yeah, it, there, there's some uh, talk of like doing um, Dragon's Lair on the 2600, so they might put that all to use. Yeah, that, that could work, yeah. yeah. So congratulations. Uh, well, well deserved as uh, the reaction from the chat uh, for a lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, you've contributed so much to the uh, homebrew community and the scene and we can truly say without you, I don't, it, it wouldn't be where it is. Like, absolutely. So, uh, congratulations again. Oh, thanks so much. That's an honor and a privilege. Yeah. Thank you. So, see you online, Fred. Oh yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Excellent. So we have two more awards to give out. And so the next one is the, uh, the last two are for 2600. The first one is Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. So here are the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. Awakening. Ladybug Arcade Rainbow 
Robot War 2684. Square Raid So, Best Atari 2600 homebrew port. Mm. In third place, Square Raid. Woo! In second place, Ladybug Arcade. Woohoo! And the winner is Robot War 2684 by Champ Games, John Champo, Nathan Strum, David Brown, John Champo, and David Exton. Woo Congratulations! Oh, and we have John on the line. Welcome again, John. Congratulations. Thank you Robot very much, fun. James. I'm back. You're back for the second <laughs> yeah. time. Wow. That's quite quite an award. Um, thanks. Um, first, uh, um, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to uh, the community. Um, and I follow up with uh, Fred's uh, nomination for... Um, Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, certainly, uh, so I'm going to thank Fred first. I think, um, <laughs> um, as we know, he's he made the uh, Melody Board um, and the Atari Box, and these are um, not not the Atari Box, um, the, the Melody Board, and you know that um, piece of hardware kind of got me back into development after a 10 year hiatus, um, just to be able to uh, um, exploit the uh, 2600 hardware and uh, and make more advanced games um, kind of got me out of my rut of um, getting burnt out on just assembly language programming. So um, the power that um, those enhancements brought to the development scene were monumental in getting me back involved in this. So and certainly Robot War is a direct result of that. It certainly could not have been possible without the, the Melody card and uh, the ARM chip and all the extra um, resources that it brings. So, so a big thanks to Fred um, and also the rest of the CDF team, uh, Chris and Daryl as well. Um, so, first and foremost, you know, certainly without their contribution um, and I innovating uh, new hardware, um, games like Robot War wouldn't even be possible to uh, to, to write for the 2600. So, thanks, thanks to Fred for that. So. Um, Usually the first guy I think is Nathan. So Nathan, sorry, you're second <laughs> fiddle today. So <laughs> win a lifetime achievement award and you'll be first. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, obviously uh, Fred called out um, Nathan in uh, his uh, acceptance speech as well. And certainly it's much well-deserved. Uh, Nathan is uh, an amazing uh, talent. Um, he brings, um, you know, he dedicates so much of his time to this uh, um hobby of ours and not just uh graphics you know um i even got him involved in sound so uh you know he, he does whether it's his uh, comic strips or you know it's always something that is uh, movie reviews or reviewing uh, games themselves um certainly um uh, he uh contributes a lot more than just graphics um to uh to the community and certainly to my games um he's I think I'm going to promote him to um, co-designer at some point, um, especially after the work that he did on uh, on Turbo Arcade as well. But yeah. anyway, back to Robot War. So um, as what always happens sometime in January, I get that itch to uh, see what I can do, make uh, Stella do for me. And uh, <laughs> that sounds a little weird. But uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, last January, um, just woke up one day and said, hey, I want to see what we can do with uh, Robotron and see if we can get this thing to run. Um, 
and um, after getting a little proof of concept together, I handed it off to a Nathan sent him. It's always my uh, my litmus test that I sent it off to him and see if he if he doesn't reply, then I know or waits a couple of days and then it wasn't such a good idea. But um, this one he jumped right on and said, "Hey, this looks great." So uh, um, so once that was going, we I knew that uh, Robot Robotron at the time was going to be uh, something that um, we both put our heads together on and uh, and do do the best we could to, to make it um, work on the Atari. So anyway, so um, certainly uh, it's a challenging game, um, but um, it was a lot of fun to work on. I think Robotron is one of the most enjoyable arcade games. So porting it to the uh, 2600 and naming it Robot War um, was, was a thrill for me. So it also uh, allowed me to get better at the game without having to spend you know a ton of money on quarters. So, cause it's <laughs> notoriously difficult. I was never good at it, but it was always an intrigued by it. So being able to bring that to the uh, Atari um, was uh, a, a thrill of mine as well. So with that said, um, again, I always already thank to David Brown for the, uh, the sounds. Um, certainly without those, it's always a stickler for me. Uh, um, Nathan's pretty good at sounds. Um, I'm terrible at them, um, but uh, so always finding someone to uh, step up and uh, and do the sounds for these games. Um, you know, you really don't know how much you're missing until that first time I put in sounds into a game and you play it for the first time with the sounds. It's it's completely different experience. So and you certainly cannot um, you know, belittle or you know uh, not. Um, not stress the importance of, of sound for these games as well so between that and nathan's graphics you know it all comes together so i, I get to just make it all move and make the sounds play when they when they have to so uh um, certainly it is a team effort um from the testing perspective i want to um, say thank you to steve ramirez and his son chris um he was uh, instrumental in uh, the testing of the game um, in its early infancy um and then when I decided I was going to add a co-op mode to the game, um, um, Steve uh, volunteered to help out and, and was able to get his son to play a uh, 40-year-old console. So uh, hats off to you, Steve. Um, and uh, his feedback was very, very helpful. Um, certainly also to you, uh, um, James, and the Zero um, Page Homebrew team for all the feedback that you gave me. So uh, certainly about that testing and helping me uh, you know, even though I do ports, you know, porting the original game is uh, not straightforward, but at least I have a set of rules to work with. But when I try to add something different, like a co-op mode, it's, uh, you know, it's a feedback from the, from the community that helps uh, helps that evolve and become, you know, something that's enjoyable to play. So anyway, so I um, also want to thank uh, Nathan Tolbert for the design of the um, Quadtari. Um, again, the Quadtari was something we had put together or Wizard of War, so we could play a two-player co-op with uh, with the voice at the same time. But Robot War is the first game that I've designed that actually utilizes four controls at the same time. So get a chance, certainly support him and uh, try to pick up a quad Tari. I think they'll be available in the Tari age if they aren't already. Um, and I can tell you um, from experience, I play with, um, played tons of Robot War, two-player dual um, joystick um, with my, um, my own son, Joseph. Um, and it's quite a blast. And I'm sure Steve and uh, Chris, uh, and his son, could say the same. So, so thanks to Nathan for for that bit of hardware to allow a uh, um, robot war to uh, play as it should um, with the two controllers and, and even with two players. So, okay, well, I got a lot of people to thank. As you can see, this is a this is a quite a group effort here. So I'll try to shorten up here. So, <laughs> um, last but certainly not least, I always thank Al. Um, Oh, actually, wait, before Al, <laughs> he is last. Um, I want to, I forgot about David Exon. Um, if anyone saw the uh, artwork for Robot War, he knocked this one out of the park. I know it's a very competitive uh, category um, this year, um, but I was just blown away by what he did with that uh, cover art. And uh, um, the poster itself that's included with that is amazing. So um, he's done some work for me before. He, um, he did uh, the Avalanche uh, um box as well and his, his artwork is great and uh david i just wanted to say thank you to you for uh, uh not only putting together such a great uh, packaging for the uh, for the game but also uh the many many rounds of uh corrections that um 
and I was uh, especially when I'm changing things to the last minute. And oh, by the way, can you change this whole section on the cart mode and uh, do this? You know, so uh, um, thanks for your patience with that. And of course, Al, the uh, grammar uh, king there, that's always saying put a comma there when it really shouldn't be. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, so thanks, Sam. And then of course that segues into Al. So thank you, Al, for all you do at Atari Age. Um, as uh, Fred had mentioned, without Atari Age. Um, a lot of us probably would have just forgotten about the Atari or just played it by ourselves in, uh, in our basement and just wondered if there was anyone else out there. Um, but, you know, certainly having Atari to bring us all together as a community has inspired us, certainly inspired me to, uh, to make these games in the first place. So, and with that said, and uh, of course, all the hard work you do um, putting the games together, um, the packaging and shipping and dealing with orders and all my complaints, um, <laughs> I appreciate it all. So, um, so that's it. Um, I'm sure I'm over time. I didn't hear the music if you played it. <laughs> but uh, uh, um, yeah. again, thanks to everyone for uh, supporting Champ Games. And uh, you know, certainly without the community, it's not even um, you know wouldn't be doing this. I certainly wouldn't be making these games for myself. So even though I do play them. Um, so thanks to that. And again, thanks again to you, James and Tanya and Darcy and um, the whole ZPH team for, for what you do as well. So, and, and these awards. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Congratulations. Great. Thanks. Thank you for coming on. Good. Talk to you online. Bye-bye. Great. Bye. So we've got one more last award. Number 18, Atari 2600 best homebrew original game. So here are the nominees for Atari 2600 best homebrew original. Atari 2600 best homebrew original. Electroball. Escape from the Castle Game of the Bear Mr. Yo-Yo. Slide Boy in Mazeland. Zark Stars. for the last award. Ooh. Oh my goodness. All right. Who's on the camera? <laughs> Nobody's on the camera. No Uh-oh. This is when everything goes boom. Yeah, it falls right over. Yeah. Uh, Atari okay. cat.
<laughs> so for the final award of the evening, we have the Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original. Who wants to hold the award? So in third place, we have Slide Boy in Mazeland. And in second place, Zark Stars A Space Saga. And Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original winner, Game of the Bear by VH Sets the Game. Vladimir Zuniga. Congratulations. Congratulations, Vladimir. So he has sent in a uh, written speech for this. Uh, he says, thanks for the award, people. I'm really happy with this award because Game of the Bear is possibly my own favorite game between all of all I have wrote in these years. It's certainly one of the games that I've enjoyed programming the most. It was a smooth project that turned out as I conceived it with no or few compromises and it inherited mechanics and know-how uh, and know-how of my previous games. I'm really glad that people like it enough to give it this award. I'm very grateful to James and all the people that make this award, these awards possible, and particularly grateful with, for the people that create the tools and bring the support and testing that allow me to make my games. And he adds, oh, and wait for the sequel. <laughs> so we're gonna get a sequel to Game of the Bear. You hit it, heard it here first. Congratulations, Vladimir. Very yes. fun. Cute game, that's for sure. There you go. So if everybody wants to come in, that wants to come in on camera, that helped in behind. We've got Chris and Gio. No, she doesn't want to come no. in. No, no. No. Oh, Chris, Chris is going to come in. You can just pop your head in. Oh, Darcy. Oh, you can't use that camera. Come on back, Darcy. All right. The person who was on the switcher. Yeah, you can just wave if you want to put your hand in. Okay. Come on, Gio. Gio was taking the calls. And Chris was on the switchboard. Um, so thank you everybody here for the uh, time they put in. It wouldn't be possible without them. I struggle enough doing the show on my own, <laughs> uh, like doing it all and, and having partners on the show. But the awards takes a lot of effort from hundreds of people, literally, uh, from making the games, testing the games, evaluating the games, and us presenting the games. So thank you everyone here yeah. for making this happen. Um, we have some big, big shows coming up on Zero Page Homebrew. We're going to do Atari Age Day 2020. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's enough. Uh, we're going to be doing Atari Age Day 2022, where we're going to be premiering and unboxing all of the new Atari Age games. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be exciting. playing an exclusive world premiere of Raptor, uh, exclusive final build of Ruby Q, exclusive final build of Alien Exterminator, mm -hmm. Exclusive work in progress update of Grizzards. Uh, exclusive world premiere of Zark Stars, Zark Stars 2 Ground Force. An exclusive world premiere, a work in progress of Dark Tower. So tons of big shows. And we're also going to celebrate the 45th anniversary of the Atari 2600 uh, later on this year and play every single Atari 2600 game that has ever been released almost <laughs> over many days um so the results of the votes will be revealed today or tomorrow so we'll unleash that and you can do what you will with that um check them out so congratulations again to all the people who made games in 2021 because it's an accomplishment just to make a game um, I haven't made one. Many people haven't made one, and it's very hard to even make a game. And I know that in the film world, uh, I've made a film, uh, many films, and it's hard to make a film, so it's, it's hard to finish anything. Yeah. So congratulations for making games, and congratulations to the nominees and then the award winners today. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for doing what you do and making games so I can play them on the show because without you making Plus, the games, there's yeah. no show. No. Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> and thank you to Tanya and Darcy for being on the show and playing all these games all year. So much. Yay us. Yeah. Yay us for playing yeah. games. <laughs> we, we would do it anyway without the show. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in and make sure you watch Zero Page Homebrew and check out all the other uh, uh, sponsors of the show, Atari Age, Atari Gamer for links, um, also to 
uh, Brian Mathern's Atari Homebrew Companion, and Argon. also Argon. Yep. All these people make this show possible as well. So thank you to them and thank you for watching. And we'll be back on Zero Page Homebrew on March 4th. So tune in there and follow this stream so you'll know when we come on live. So we'll see you then. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.